the state of thy flocks. Proverbs 27, verse 23, the Bible reads, Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy herds. So, you know, one thing that immediately comes to mind is the State of the Union address that we have every year, January and February. It's been going on forever now. But the State of the Union is when the president addresses the nation and tells us what's going on. How are we looking? What's, what's the shape of our country in? When's the wall going to get built? <laughs> you know, when's, Gu when's Guantanamo Bay going to get shut down? You know, whatever. Um, these things, what's the unemployment numbers looking like? Who are we at war with this year? Who are we going to be at war with next year? All these type of things that the people of the country want to know about. And the, it's usually delivered in January or February uh, after the close out of the previous year. And so we get a state of the union. We get a, how are we looking? What are we doing type address from the leader of the country? And so the title of my sermon tonight is the state of thy flocks. Obviously we don't have much control over the government and what the government does. They give us the illusion of control. You know, it's the power of the people, right? But they, I think, and, and what I believe, the person who counts the votes is the person who's in charge. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have the illusion of control, and I don't think we can control the government too much. We can pretty much watch and see where it's going and do our best to get out of its way and um, try to live our lives as best we can for our individuals' uh, self and our families and our churches and do the best we can on the, on the sidelines. That's how I feel about it. So what we do have control over is the state of our own flocks and our own herds. And you might be saying to yourself, well, I don't own any, any flocks or herds, but you do in a way. Go ahead and turn to Psalm 1. You do own your own flocks and your own herds. And I mean, just think of it this way. You, most of you own a house or you rent a home. And uh, so your home is one of the things that you can uh, control you have power over you know if there's a, a rotting step on your back step you know if you need to fix that you know if you have tires that are getting bald and worn out you don't want to have a blowout on the freeway you know if if there's a leak under the kitchen sink that you need to tend to or your water bill is going to be sky high and that's just one of the things that you need to tend to but i want to look over certain areas in our lives that uh that God has placed us in charge over and that he has committed to our trust that we need to look over not just a home that's that's one of the least of the things that we have in our in our possession in our power so uh, the first thing is our personal walk with God God he's given us so much he's given us eternal life he came to this world he died for us he he gave us his word we know that we can grow in in relationship and fellowship with him by reading his word and by applying it in our lives but also by prayer and so we need to take uh, due diligence to our own prayer life to our own walk with God so that we are not um, dismissing the most important person that we have in our life and that's God and and the next thing on the list is your family your family is uh, is the the second most important thing in your life you and, and that's what i was told by my grandfather the night before i got married he uh we had the uh the, the pre-wedding dinner and we all sat down and and our family had a, a few minutes to stand up one by one if they wanted to and give us a word of encouragement or give us some advice and my grandfather stood up and he said jake put god first your wife second and everybody else third and you'll do well in life and I've always he tried my best to heed to that advice. It was good advice. So, you know, put God first. Your your state of affairs with God. How are how is your relationship with Him? Keep a short account, like Brother Fannin always says. Keep a short account with God. And then also your family, your your wife, your husband, your 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 uh, your children. You should uh, you should be in charge of. How is your family growing? What Brother, Brother Ross just uh, spoke on was a, a very important message. How to have Bible worship time at home. Are your kids growing? Are they learning at home? Are they, are they reading their Bible? And 
are they they are they praying to God and do you give them a chance to pray and and are, are all these things that you that you as a spiritual leader in the home need to make sure they are doing but also besides just the spiritual aspect of your children's growth and your family's development is academics are the kids doing their studies on time are they learning and um, notice our, our the the verse on this topic uh, you don't have to go back to it but it says be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds look well uh, if you type in look well into a concordance it pops up about eight times one of them is like jacob in the well you know talking about so actually looking well is only mentioned about four times in context to this scripture and they're all in um uh proverbs one of them is proverbs 31 verse 27 and it says she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness so it's the man's responsibility it's the father's responsibility to guide the house and to uh, make sure that his family's on course but it's basically the responsibility of the mother to take care of the home while dad's outside earning an income and to make sure that her children are walking in the ways of the Lord and, and that they are growing. And that includes academics, that includes chores around the house, that includes uh, treating people nice. I know that my family, we had to sit down this morning and have a little chat with our children and teach them, reteach them how to address people in public because we are we've been noticing a pattern and and someone will tell our children hello and sometimes they might get a responding hey or a responding i'll ignore you for now and focus on what i want to do and play with my toys so we had to correct that this morning and have a little chat also in the same book uh, proverbs 14 15 the simple believeth every word but the prudent man looketh well to his going all right, so we need to look well to our herds. We need to know the state of our flocks. And that includes our family. It includes our church. We need to be an asset to our church. We don't need to rely on the Miss uh, Fannin and Brother Fannin to keep everything going around here. Uh, we need to make sure that we're taking out the trash and we're vacuuming and we're uh, doing whatever we can, If even if it's just as simple as grabbing some waters and loading them inside the fridge and, and pulling them aside. So we need to be active soul winning. Uh, we need to be active at soul winning time. We need to um, always be ready if we're called upon to read aloud or to help take up offering or any of that stuff. So we've talked about our walk with God. We talked about our family. We've talked about our church and your job your income this is pretty much what what sticks out to me when it says be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks well the flocks back in those days the herds in those days uh it applied to how they made their living they had to raise that cattle they had to raise their goats and their sheep and and that's what they sustained themselves on if they didn't have any cattle or livestock they were all going to starve so our job our income man is to know the know the state of our job and and obviously i don't think anybody in here is cattle farmers but we are all trades and and we have all different ways of of, of providing an income for our families so we need to be diligent at our job we need to know how to perform that job to the highest level we don't want to be an employee that is at the bottom of the barrel the one that's going to get cut the first time that they the company has a downturn and they need to cut some lay off some people we don't want to be that person we want to be the last person that would ever get cut and some of you have businesses and it's uh it's it's not as simple as being the best employee but it's knowing okay i've got this job lined up that job lined up and that job lined up and i need to make sure this is done on time and that's done on time and and that's how you do but I, i've got a, a whole nother sermon that i want to preach on on just the the idea of budgeting and budgeting your time budgeting your resources and paying the bills that's that's how another way of knowing the flocks and and looking well to your herds um also your friends and lastly your home and your possessions all of these things can be considered flocks and herds if you have if you're working at the house and one of my biggest complaints is i have such little little time 
such short time freedom to do things around my own house. But when I do have that time to knock things out around my house, that's very precious. So I'm working as, as to, get thing, to get things done. And sometimes I'll get a call from a friend. Hey, I'm in trouble. I need, I need your help. And I have to drop what I'm doing. But, and, I, and I gladly do so. And everybody should. You drop what you're doing to go help out a friend in need. And so this is, this is just life. This is what we do as Christians. We, we help out when we can. And lastly, our home, our possessions, like I said earlier, making sure your house is in order, making sure the, the, the leak is fixed and the, the tires are replaced and, and the car has been tuned up and the grass is being mowed and everything else that requires your attention. Everything that God has placed under your hand and your supervision needs to be taken care of because it, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. He gave it to you. He expects you to take care of it. And so, you're in Psalm 1, and look at verse 1. One of my favorites, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Y'all might not view it as this, but I certainly do. That's a promise from God. You live your life according to the Bible. You put God first. He will prosper you. Now, you know the, uh, the other uh, danger of prospering in this life is getting the big head, getting swelled up with pride, and thinking that you've done it all on your own. And that is the exact opposite. And just like Brother Ross said, God hates pride. God loves the humble heart, the humble spirit. And the last thing we want to do is live for God, to put Him first, to do everything that we're supposed to do, and then He turns around and blesses us, and we view these blessings now as something that we attained on our own on our own merit and that we we deserve this because we are such a great person and and we forget who God is that's the last thing that we ever need to happen so I've already alluded to this prior uh, in this sermon so far how do you prevent yourself from becoming a victim of pride from prospering from the blessing of God how do you prevent yourself of, from becoming a victim of pride and basically we can learn from Matthew chapter 25, if you'll turn there. We'll end in Matthew 25 tonight. This, when God does give us his blessing, when he gives us an outpouring, we can, we can do well by remembering Matthew 25 and the parable of the talents. In verse 14, the Bible reads, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants... And delivered unto them whose goods? Whose? His. his. And delivered unto them his goods, not our goods. Our children are not our children. That's true. It's his children. That's right. My wife is his daughter. <laughs> Talk about a father in law you don't want to disappoint, right? <laughs> so, well. Her, her father is my father, too, so we're not going to talk about any of that stuff. Uh, I am from Georgia. But, um, so, just kidding. Moving along, it says, uh, so it says, And delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid whose money? His Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliveredest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. 
His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. For the sake of time, you know the story. The other servant that went and hid his Lord's money. The Lord came and reckoned with him. He only could produce the one that he gave him. He, he didn't lose it, thank God, but he didn't. He didn't put it to work. He didn't use the talent that God had given him. And so Lord, and, and God was very angry. He was very wroth with this servant. He took what was his and he gave it to the responsibility of the one who actually true, uh, showed to be faithful with his talents. And so we could take a, a strong lesson from that. And, and one of the, 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 what I wanted you to take from it is whatever God gives you in life, don't think for a second that you attained it on your own merit. Don't think for a second that you were just so special and something else that, you know, it's God who gave you everything you have. He gave you the breath that you're breathing right now. And you should take everything you have, whatever that may be, and use it to the glory of God. And try to reinvest it into His kingdom. Because our life here is but a, va a vapor. We are like the grass today and we are withered and we are in our our lives are being cast into the fire tomorrow and not on a spiritual sense so just a just in, in a, the breath the short brevity of life we only have a limited amount of time to do as much for the kingdom as we can and with that being said i hope uh, you all look well to the state of your flocks whether they be little or great god can bless them and turn everything around for you let's pray Lord, we thank you for everything that you've given us, that you've entrusted into our care. We ask that you just allow us to remain good stewards of what you've given us, Lord, that you give us um, the, the knowledge and the wisdom to know that everything we have is from you, that you can help us multiply these talents and to, to fill, out other, fill into others' lives with what you've given us. We love you, Lord. We ask that you please give us all a good night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.